He says, where are the Chris and predators today? Okay, chat. My, pre chat, my prediction for this video, my prediction for this video, um, they're out. They're not, you guys say jail? Absolutely not. Guys, I did, I did not pre-watch it, but here's my guess. It's gonna be not in jail. Barely any of them make oh, it to jail. Yo, Felix, um, senpai, you will, you will. Yo, I would write about why, but uh, there's a bunch of reasons why. Uh, and the show is a big part of that. All creeps from Hanson. This video will cover exactly what happened to the six most notable Two creeps from Hanson vs. Predator. And we're going to begin by talking about the math tutor Mike Manzi, who's had his life pretty much ruined as a result of the I'm Chris Hanson, No You're Not episode. Oh, no. After arriving at the Sting House, Mike bumped into Chris immediately before trying to make the excuse that he was simply making sure that the 13-year-old girl was safe inside her house. After desperately attempting to leave, Mike was arrested, taken back to the police station, and interrogated for Sorry, approximately I'm 35 minutes. After which the episode ends with the explanation that because Mike's discussion was pretty clean prior to the meetup, he was only sentenced to three years probation, meaning that he avoided any time in prison and wasn't registered on any unsavory lists. However, this isn't to say that Mike's life has been easy ever since the episode went live. In late 2021, a conversation was leaked with one of the show's editors who explained that the head of security, Ron Knight, was actually Mike Manzi's uncle and that there is a part that never aired where Manzi is insisting to tonight to let him go because he's known Manzi since birth. This is apparently why Manzi made such an effort to convince the crew to let him leave peacefully, yet his uncle told Manzi the best thing he could do is go through the garage and remain silent, which Manzi obviously didn't do. As a result of the episode, Mike now hates his uncle, which has more than likely led to the decline of Manzi's other family relationships. However, the most interesting thing revealed in Wait, the message exchange was that Manzi was an avid watcher of TCAP back in the day, which explains why he recognized Chris Hansen immediately. Mike has since been found on a felony dating site as Brother. well as on Facebook under a different Wait, on a fucking what? Immediately. Mike has since been found on a felony dating site. What the fuck is a felony dating site, yo? Okay, dude. Right, as well as on Facebook under a different name, where a Reddit user was able to get this picture, as well as apparently have a conversation with Mike, who stated that he gets recognized very often, and that Mike actually seems like a very chilled out dude. On Chris Hansen's podcast, Chris explained that Mike is no longer working in education. As far as we know, he is not tutoring or teaching anywhere. He lives with his parents. Which would explain two recently surfaced photos of Mike working in a retail job, representing a pretty significant fall since tutoring for some of Connecticut's wealthiest families. However, Mike still got off lightly in comparison to John Dupee, who as a result of oh, his appearance guy. on the show has now become homeless. John waltzed into the sting house without saying a word and was so creepy that simply standing next to him was enough to terrify the decoy, yet she apparently had nothing to worry about as he Bro. stated that he was only there to watch the football. Yo. After revealing that John was simultaneously talking- Bro, they just- Dude, dude, guys, I don't want to profile by haircut, but dude, there's something to this that's kind of chilling. But this is like such a rare haircut too, though. Look at this shit. Like, dud. He stated that he was only there to watch the football. <laughs> After revealing that John was simultaneously talking to more than one minor, he was arrested, interrogated, and given a notice to appear in court, where he'd be trolled and heckled by the attendees as comparable? he pleaded guilty. And the judge actually in the case had to order the crowd to be quiet, to be orderly, because they had figured out who he was and what he was being accused of, what he was pleading guilty to. John Dupee was given an eight-year prison sentence beginning in August 2016, although this certainly isn't where the story ends. Only four months into his prison term, John's brother and sister were both killed in a car accident, which happened on the very same street where the sting house was located. And in case losing both of his siblings wasn't bad enough, there are unconfirmed anecdotes that John was also disowned by his parents after the episode went live. He was released from prison on the 24th of July 2018, serving just two years out of his eight year sentence. Yet after being released, John was forced to register on a public offender list, which displayed his address as a Connecticut homeless shelter. After three years in the shelter, John was able to move into a group house, although in October 2021, only two months after moving out of the homeless shelter, John violated his probation in an unspecified way and was Yo. sent back to prison for another year and two months. Chat, I, guys, I never get an answer about this chat. The bond you have, the, if, you do, if, 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 if you're in jail like this, right? If you pay it to get out, do you get your money back if you don't do anything crazy or whatnot? 
Since his release in December 2022, John has been residing in a shelter for recovering addicts. Although John Dupe- see, see, look at this chat, see? You guys, I, I don't know, see, you guys don't know either. It's yes, no, yes, no, it's about half and half of yes and no's. Like, nobody actually know about this. This is it's so, it's, it's like a, it's like a, it's, it's, it's a mystery. He isn't the only person on this list who's been back to prison, as Joshua Cologne also recently violated his probation. Yeah, this guy Joshua was the New York plumber odd. who locked the door behind him after entering the sting house, stating that his biggest nightmare was ending up on a Chris Hansen episode. After Josh comes out of the bathroom, Chris is already there waiting for oh, him. Oh, no. You know who I am? Yes. And as a result, Josh is unbelievably honest, laying out his intentions immediately. After being taken back to the station, he'd incredibly admit that this wasn't the first first time that he'd met up with someone under age, which eventually helped the court to secure a seven year prison sentence. Oh. After this thing happened, but before Josh went to prison, he was still working as a plumber and would admit to a coworker that he was very remorseful and would happily take back his crazy Russian ex, then go back to that house with Chris Hansen. On his really bad days, he would talk about how he doesn't want to die alone and that he knows that he'll never have a semblance of a normal life again. Jeez. Josh was sent to prison a few months later in early 2016 and would serve three years out of his seven year sentence. However, this wouldn't be the last time that Josh ended up behind bars. In September 2020, Again. approximately one year after being released from his first prison stint, a post was made to the TCAP forum stating, Joshua Cologne was convicted yesterday after spending a few months in prison for a probation violation. Four years jail, execution suspended after six months, probation nine years. This guy will never learn. Josh's second prison term came to an end in March 2021, after which his former coworker and friend took to Wait. Reddit to explain the reason for the sentence. He contacted me after he got out of prison for a second time, letting me know that he'd been framed. Apparently, he wasn't allowed to have any pictures of any children on his phone. His sister shared a picture of his niece in a chat that he was in, and he got locked up for it. His explanation. Nah, no Interestingly, if you now search Josh's name on an inmate search engine, it states that Joshua Cologne is or was recently an inmate currently at the Connecticut Department of Corrections, CTDOC, located in Weathersford CT, leading many to believe that Josh is now back in prison for a third time. But what happened to the wealthy accountant who Chris recognized from the yeah, train? Yes, I'm just confused, guys. I don't like too much into details, but but how how would they know that 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 the exchange happened, and why would he have maybe saved the picture on his phone? Like, if somebody sends you a picture, doesn't mean you have it on your phone saved up, right? It would still be a text or something like that. No, I'm, not, I'm confused in Weathersford CT, leading many to believe oh, yeah. that Josh is now back in prison for a third time. But what happened to the wealthy accountant who Chris recognized from the train? His name was Charles Lawrence, and after walking into the sting house, the following exchange occurred. Now, Chris, what are you doing? But this is the first time I've caught anyone who I know. After which Charles was arrested and taken back to the station for an interview. Throughout the interrogation, Charles made the hilarious claim that because of his poor eyesight, he read the decoy's age as 18 instead of 13. Oh, Chad. I got scratched. My glasses were fit. I'm looking at it, but he said 18. I swear to God, I would never, ever in my entire life be a 13. However, oh, yeah, the judge wasn't dumb enough to buy this excuse, who sentenced Lawrence to two years in prison, which he'd served between June 2000 and June 2018. Whilst in prison, the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, under which Lawrence was employed, confirmed that Mr. Lawrence's AICPA membership was terminated, effective May 25th, 2017, because of a final judgment of conviction for a crime punishable by imprisonment for more than one year. Chris also mentioned that Charles had a second job as a commercial real estate agent, and after finding Charles's LinkedIn, it states that he's the president of a company called Lawrence Real Estate Enterprises, Inc., which is is still active today and lists Charles as the company's CEO. However, Chris did mention on his podcast that Charles had some issues with keeping his license. I'm not clear as to whether or not he's still involved in commercial real estate. There was an issue with his license after his conviction, after he pleaded guilty. Although, even if he was able to, it's unlikely that Charles would get much work these days given his reputation. In May 2021, a post was made to Reddit explaining that they saw Charles Lawrence living in an over 55s complex, which has been confirmed as true after looking up the address listed on his public offender registry. This page also shows the most recent photo of him taken in mid-2018, exhausting all of the information that we have on Charles Lawrence. However, we've got plenty of dirt oh. on the now infamous Steve. Oh, this guy is absolutely cooked up.
Evan Buchanan, who gained notoriety for showing up to the Sting house with duct tape, a camera, and various weapons in his car. This was extra terrifying as after arriving at the house, he refused to enter and rather try to coax the decoy into getting into his vehicle. Do you want to come in? Do you want to go? Can you just like come in and chat for a little bit? What do you want to do? After being confronted by Chris, Buchanan tries to blame his depravity on the PTSD he got during his military time in Iraq. Although despite this impediment, Buchanan still served three years in prison, after which fans of the show began to notice that the story he shared with Chris wasn't entirely accurate. A user by the name of Bud1985 took to Reddit in a post reading, Stephen Buchanan, this took me a good hour of searching through old pics from Iraq but I finally found it. I served with his turd. Bud continued in the comments by stating, when he was active duty, he was a tank mechanic. And how do I know this? He was my tank's mechanic. He would do maintenance on it in the motor pool every Monday. He never went on a single mission. He never seen a minute of combat. He may have been through some mortifier, but that's it. It pissed me off so bad when I heard him blame it on PTSD. The most recent photo of Stephen Buchanan comes from July 2022, which accompanies a further update from Chris Hansen's podcast. And as far as we can tell, he he still lives in Connecticut with his parents and he's working driving a, a large truck. Also explaining that he was able to have a conversation with Stephen's father. I called the number we had for Stephen Buchanan go? and a man picked up and it, it actually sounded a little bit like Stephen Buchanan and I, I asked for Stephen. Right away the man said, is this Chris Hansen? And I said, yes it is. This is why you're calling. I said, I'm calling for Stephen Buchanan and, and the father had the tone of a man exasperated with having to deal with the circumstances around his son. He told me that Stephen has moved on with his life and essentially that he wants to only look forward and then the senior Buchanan asked that I never call the number again. But while Stephen has done a pretty good job of moving on with his life, this has been significantly more difficult for Jeff Sokol well, who became yeah. arguably the most notable predator in Chris Hansen history after bringing a pepperoni pizza to the Fairfield Stinghouse. The iconic episode became etched in YouTube history as Jeff seemed so relaxed about the confrontation that he was only able to focus on his dinner. I want to know a little bit more about you first. Can I eat first? After Jeff spent 16 minutes demolishing his pizza, he'd offer Chris a slice on the way out. You can take your pizza if you like. You want a slice? I'm good. Thank you. And even after being taken back to the station, Jeff maintained the attitude that he hadn't done anything wrong, according to a source who was at the station with him. He kept his cool. He was pretty healthy and dad. He was going to be able to get out of this be able to get a good lawyer and really take care of his case. While Jeff seemed confident that he wouldn't receive any charges, this didn't alter his reality, as after going through three different lawyers, he'd be sentenced to two and a half years in prison beginning on the 27th of May 2017. Whilst locked up, the Jeff Sokol episode became so popular that fans of the show tracked down the restaurant from which the pizza had been ordered and began to visit the restaurant asking for the exact same pizza that Jeff had gotten. Oh, the restaurant okay, has since had hundreds of positive reviews, many of which subtly referencing the Jeff Sokol incident. And according to an email sent to us by a fan, the restaurant had to eventually ask people to stop asking for the Sokol special, although there doesn't Jesus actually seem to be any evidence for this claim. What by the, the time Jeff was released from prison in June 2019, his appearance on the show had racked up a view count in the tens of millions, leading Jeff to try and change his name legally to Sonny Derek Porter. Sokol actually went to court and petitioned to change his name to Sonny Derek Porter. A few years ago, I was arrested as a part of a Sting operation trying to meet a girl who was underage. The Sting was part of a nationally syndicated TV show, Crime Watch Daily, Hanson vs. Predator. This episode is now available online, along with many other troll videos and nasty comments from fans of the show. In the aftermath, I, mean, I have experienced brother. humiliation, harassment, and embarrassment. One could argue that this was justified, but I have surely lived with much remorse since the arrest. Since my current name will always be linked via a simple internet search, I am requesting authorization to change my name. I'm working hard to be a better person overall and making a sincere effort to treat everyone with respect. I hope to meet new friends and acquaintances and wish not to be judged based on one gigantic mistake I made a few years ago. I hope to be judged for the person I really am, the person I am today. More than anything, I would like a second chance at a happy and safe life. However, the name change was eventually rejected, which only led to more trolling. It was then discovered that Jeff had been forced to sell his apartment and according to this Reddit comment, which isn't the best evidence, Jeff moved moved in with his parents in blank. It seems like he comes from a pretty affluent family, so he probably just mooches from his parents and stays low key. The most recent photo of him comes from early 2021, which unfortunately marks the final piece of information we have on Jeff Sokol, because despite being one of the show's most
most notable people, he certainly kept one of the lowest profiles. Interesting, actually. I mean, that's pretty crazy. And the guy with the biggest video is like the most low key. Yeah, that is really dank, though. Mm. Chat, what is that 46k watching it? Yo, this is X. X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Boy, my voice as well. That is. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.